It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who is going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you. Because that's New Orleans and this is happy hour. A cocktail fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleans in a bar, we're at the fabulous Wayfair today on Ferret Street. Wayfair is a restaurant and a bar where they serve handcrafted food and spirits. They put fine dining into a sandwich, which is an interesting concept. They take awesome fine dining recipes and make sandwiches out of it. They also put fine booze into a glass. And they have a three-hour happy hour here every day from 4 to 7, where they have cheapo prices on the same great drinks. Also, they have a fabulous brunch on weekends, which is typically... Saturday and Sunday. You can come down and join us in the old time down here. We're here usually on Wednesdays from 4 to 5. We'll come down with your own friends if you have any and check out Wayfair. On Ferret Street, it's going to be a very interesting show today, I think, Andrew. You think? Not really, but I okay. just thought I'd throw that in to try and, you know, make it sound a bit more enticing. One, we have two fabulous songwriters here, two of the New Orleans' greatest songwriters. Alex McMurray is with us. Alex, welcome back to Happy Hour. Hi. How are you today? I'm fantastic. fan fucking test. I thought you were going to be fan fucking fantastic. <laughs> You, you look more fan-fucking-tastic than ever, actually. I know. What it's do you put it down to? Unhealthy uh, living? Clean living. Uh, I, the creator. I, my trainer. Uh, my <laughs> team. i got to give it up for my team. <laughs> <laughs> How many people have you got on the team now? Oh, six, seven, eight, nine hundred yeah. people on the team. Tons of people. Tons of people. It takes Payroll. a big machine to keep the Alex it's McMurray huge. industries it's going. It's grinding away all the time. Yeah. 24 hours a yeah, day. Yeah, I know there's grinding. stuff on Twitter constantly, and you've yes. got your own TV channel. Yeah. I'm, I'm building a dam, actually, right now. <laughs> How's that going? It's going to be the biggest biggest thing to hit the state since, yeah. uh, you know, since uh, the Bonnie it's Carey spillway. spillway. You build you know. it. That's a nice idea to build your own dam. Cause yeah, I can put in, my name on it. Energy of Alex McMurray. The, Ho- the Hoover Dam. I mean, nobody <laughs> the thinks, McMurray. Nobody can say yeah. anything about, you know, Herbert Hoover except he's got his dam. Right. If I got my own dam, people, oh, you know, Alex McMurray Dam. You know, the Alex say, McMurray Dam. You okay. take your kids there. We can watch them uh, flood the that's right. The you can turn your kids off the dam. That's a nice idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. What about a nuclear power plant? I don't know. It's it's too touchy. It's too uh, so it's it's, yeah. it's it's a yeah. That's too hot. Nuclear power, yeah. Hey, Lindsay Hortenstein is here as you well, got it. which is a very interesting name. Very hard to pronounce that name. It is Hortenstein. Is that your? <laughs> No. Family name, or did you it change it? It is not. I, I married into that name. Oh, you married into it? I married into What's that. What's your maiden name? And I name? came from Really. Really. Yeah. I gr- you had a great name before that. It was pretty good, actually. What yeah. was it? We'll go back to it for the day. What is it? It was Really. It's German. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, did you, <laughs> why are you guys it, laughing at that? It was misleading. I, I, I it couldn't It was a misleading it. question. No. What was to say it again? Really. Really? It really was that. Yeah. <laughs> R e e l. R i e h l e. Oh shit! You have to say it again. R e h. R i e h l e. R i e h l i e. That's is that right? H l e. It's okay. It's all right. H l e. No i. No i. Okay, but it sounds. I before e except after c. Okay, really? Yeah. Okay, that's a nice name. Yeah. Although I bet you got sick of spelling that. I did. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. When people call up. And how often do you have to do that? That's really a pain in the ass, isn't it? When you have a difficult name. Probably every day. Yeah. That's all right. So Hortenstein Stein yeah. is not that good either, though. <laughs> Spelling-wise, right? <laughs> not the best. I no. Mean, no, that's bad, too. It's quite all right. Though. How long have you been married for? Um, Ten years in wow. December, I know. That's a yeah. long time. Yeah. Well, you must have been like 12 or something when you yeah, got Yeah, you know. like. Pretty young. 24. 24, okay. Yeah. And you, you're my neighbor. I am your neighbor. Yeah. So Lindsay walks in here today and says, I'm your neighbor. I live around the corner from you. Nice. I've got the toddler. I've got, yeah, nobody knows me. Everybody knows my toddler. That's my toddler and my dog. You, what sort of dog have you got? I'd be more likely to remember that. He is a super mutt. Um, <laughs> super mutt. But I don't know. Long legs, probably whip it. Greyhound, yeah. something Are you mixed. on the upstairs? I'm on the bottom, oh, not upstairs. Who though. owns the dog that barks up the upstairs? Is that your building or the next that door? That is not me. Okay, no. some dog barks at me constantly. Anyway, I've no, got the toddler. No, no. That's a good conversation Yeah, starter. a little red-headed toddler. How old is little Horton Stein Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> She's 20 months old. 20 months? 20 months, So what's yeah. that, five? Yeah, going on 14. 14. So that 20 months is difficult to figure that out, right? She's almost How two. Old? Andrew, have you finished your beer already? Yes. 
That's pretty, pretty quick. Well, it's well, the first one of the you day. You get another one, yeah, that's right. <laughs> there you go. And how long have you been living around the corner from me? Oh, my God, three years or oh so. Oh, my God, you think I'd recognize you, wouldn't you? Yeah, I've, got right. a, I've got a bad problem about that, though. Have yeah. we spoken to each other on we the street? Have. We actually have, but well, it's okay. It's really usually bad. like early in the morning walking dogs. Yeah, but that is really bad, though, isn't it? Do you have that problem, That's quite Alex? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, I do not. You don't? You remember people all the time? Absolutely. Everyone who's yeah. been to the dam, you know who they are, the <laughs> architects. <and> the <laughs> That's my job. Wow. You're good. I'm not good at remembering faces. Louis Arrocha is here as well. That's Louis, right. I'm sorry I haven't brought you into the conversation yet, but That's okay. I'm I know you're shy. It. No, I am shy kind of guy. Are you really? Yeah. Has anyone ever described you as shy before? My wife. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> How long have you been married? I've been married 33 years. Married yeah. my high school sweetheart, started dating our freshman year in high school, got married, and been living in bliss ever since. Wow. Jesus, well, I'm psychic. Uh, you might not have known that. I didn't But know I'm going to take a stab at you're from New Orleans. I am from New Orleans, but... Um, How did I know? Heritage uh, background right? is Cuba. My dad was born in Cuba. Your came, dad was born in Cuba. Came you to the, were not, right? No. Came to the U.S. before uh, the Castro takeover. Okay. So you're going to go back when they open the airport up here? To Absolutely. I can't wait. I'd love to go back. Yeah. yeah. Do you still have family there? Um, my dad uh, and his father left. His mother refused to leave the country, uh, came from a relatively uh, wealthy family, owned a few factories in uh, in Cuba. and so uh, A few factories in Cuba? A typewriter you, and shoe factory. You don't hear that to name a few. very often. No, you don't. And Cuban so, um, business magnet. She wouldn't leave but wanted my father and... Uh, and and his dad to leave so right. um here we go uh so mom your mom just stayed behind did you grandmother. say your grandmother stayed behind grandmother stayed so behind. she's no longer alive i assume don't know uh you tried, don't know tried many many is, years to she on, stay she, stay she, in contact and the the cuban government kind of censored every piece of mail and so you don't know what got through apparently nothing because never got any letters back or anything so hmm. from his uh seventh birthday on my dad never had contact with his mom wow. in cuba yeah. wow what a what a dream come true. Yeah. From your seventh birthday on, you don't have to have any contact with your mom. Yeah. Don't tell me things like that. <laughs> that sounds great. Is your mom still with us? My mom? Lindsay? Yes. Hortenstein? Yes. Really? Is she still called Really? <laughs> she is, yeah. She didn't change her name? She did not. What was her maiden name? Cranel. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Cranel. Cranel. I'm not writing that one down even. No. C-R-A-N-E-L-L. Two N's. Two N's. you were right on it. Pretty close, right? Yeah, pretty close. Crannel. Okay, who have you got a text from so far? Um, so far, that was actually from my husband. Oh, what's his name? His, name is, his name is Barksdale. Barksdale Horton, Hortenstein. Yep. Shit, wow. you've got... The, I don't even know what's made me get on this. <laughs> You're making his <laughs> handle. I am not. He's a junior, too. So Barksdale Hortenstein, Jr. Yeah, I thought you were going to say one. he's Jewish for a minute there. No. Which which Not I would Jewish. have believed. But Hortenstein's a pretty Jewishy sounding name, isn't it? Does the people assume you're Jewish now? Yes. They do. If it got me into the JCC nursery school, that it would did. Be, no, it, it wouldn't didn't. get you in. No. You don't have to be Jewish to go to the JCC. No, you don't. Surely that would be against no, the law, you don't. wouldn't it? That's I unconstitutional. Think you get an edge, but Where does your kid uh, toddler go to? What's toddler's name? He's not the third. Olivia. Thank goodness. No. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be <laughs> Olivia Hortenstein. That's a nice name. That's a very nice yeah. name. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Okay, Louis, so your mom, your grandmother. We're talking to Olivia's your gra- mom. <laughs> your, gra- <laughs> your grandmother, we don't know. If she, so no one's been back, obviously. No, nobody's been back. Uh, I'm trying to get my dad and myself to uh, get permission to from the government to go back as You don't as need possible. permission anymore. Yeah, is that true? I think are there flights straight out of the United States? I thought you had to have going like a to be. family tie or something like you that. Have to to ha- you have to fit into one of like seven categories, but anybody can do it now. Yeah. Everyone's going, and that's going to be gone pretty soon too. Should be incredible. I've heard it's a beautiful country. Yeah. Well, they're having the... I just heard on, you know, WWNO, the NPR station, they're having the fall dry... What's what season? Yeah, the spring. Giving away tickets to the jazz, the yeah. Havana Jazz Festival. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Wow. Pretty cool. The Havana Jazz Fest. I wonder who's there. Um, I wonder if they have the same thing like us, like, you know... Steely Dan. Yeah. Three <laughs> three doors down. Or, yeah. The Stones are playing. Aren't the Stones playing? The Stones playing? are playing the at the Stones. Havana Jazz Fest. I, I don't know if they're playing there, but they're playing... Yeah. Somewhere. Well, I assume they are playing somewhere, probably. Somewhere Sadly, in Cuba. Are they? The Rolling Stones are playing in Cuba. I believe so. Really? Wow. Mm. You may ask Google. You want to Google it? Go ahead. Are the Rolling Stones playing in Cuba? Say that into the Siri thing and see if it, see what it says back. Hey, Siri. Are the Rolling Stones playing in Cuba? Okay, hold it up to the microphone so we can all hear it. Checking my sources. 
My web search turns something up for the Rolling Stones playing in Cuba. Have a look. Okay, let's have Stay a look. There. So you chose that pseudo bullshit English accent <laughs> for your Siri. What was wrong with? I think with he's Australian. No, mate. Is he? <laughs> yeah, I think I was Australian. That's Australian. That's even more sad. That can't be. Try it. Try another one. Do like, uh, what's a good place to buy fish and chips? Um, Friday the 25th in Havana. Should we have the show there? Friday the 25th of what? Of March. Wow. This month. This month. That's like two weeks away. Yeah. Let's wow. go. Okay. Let's do it. Well, Lewis, you can hook us up, great, because you've got family. I gotta have people there, right? Mm-hmm. So, what's up with this Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz and all this crap? Are they all? They're both Cubans, aren't they? They're done. Yeah. I heard some interesting stuff. You can tell us if this is true. I thought that because there's so many Latino people and Latina people in the United States of America, that you could win anything mm-hmm. if you just happened to, you know, speak Spanish. But apparently, being from Cuba to all the Mexican and Central American people here I, I is not, I, I is not I, cool. Is I wish that, that were true of fundraising because then I could raise as much money as I needed for Cafe Hope, but it's simply not true. What do you do at Cafe Hope? Uh, executive director, Cafe Hope. I would actually know that if I read yeah. this. Hang on yeah, a check out the bio. I you're took the, time uh, to write it for Christ's sake. You're a native New Orleans who worked in a... <laughs> 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 I, see, I, I just didn't have a minute what with the hurricane and everything. Um, it says here, a native New Orleans. Well, I guess that already. That's not hard to figure yeah. out. You worked in the family financial service business. What does that mean? Your family had a financial services business? Yeah, did some investing, did some, uh, opened a mortgage division, so stayed in financial services for 20 plus years. So your dad was in the financial services? Yeah, that's correct. Wow. So you inherit, you went into business with your dad as a financial planner? I did. I went in business with my dad, um, God, probably uh, two years out of school. And uh, What school was that? I went to UL Lafayette. Uh, high school. I guess in New Orleans, we all ask about what high school you went to, right? So, oh, no, I, I, well, what high I school? A, I was a good Catholic boy. I, went to Archbishop Shaw, you know. Okay. Where is that? It's in Marrero as well. Marrero. West Bank. I can't even say that right. Yeah. Can you say Marrero correctly, Alex? I'm not at liberty to say. No. What with it? <laughs> Andrew can do it. Andrew can do all these New Orleans accents. I don't know if I can because I feel like everywhere I go when I... When somebody asks me where I'm from and I say New Orleans, they say you don't sound like you're from New Orleans. And, really? What are you yeah. supposed to sound like? Me. Like Lewis. You like yeah. that? Like Lewis. <laughs> Arocha. Ironically enough, I get people ask me if I'm from Brooklyn. I don't know where they get a Brooklyn accent from this. Yeah. But what kind I mean, of people I, ask you that? There are notes. There are notes in there. Tannins. Tannins? Brooklyn Tannins in there. Yeah. Well, that's a sort yeah. of similar people. I've, I've heard that before, that that real New Orleans accent sounds like a sort of New York accent. Anyway, never mind that. It says that here you were, uh, you were elected the chairman of the board of Cafe Hope in 2009. Now, Cafe Hope is kind of like Cafe Reconcile. It is. Uh, basically the same premise. A premise we do things a little bit differently, but what we have in common is uh, the founder of Cafe Hope was one of the founders of uh, Cafe Reconcile. So his name's uh, Tim Falcon. He's an attorney on the West Bank. So him and... What was his maiden name? I think it was... R- really? Uh, I think really, yeah. Okay. Should have been if it wasn't. <laughs> why did they did they have his p- parting of the ways? Was it, no, no, no. Was I, I think he just... Group? he. You know, he's a, a, a very philanthropic man, really cares about community and understood that the kids that we're serving were never going to be able to get across the bridge to reconcile. So wanted to duplicate the program for the West Bank. Mm. Ah, cool. So what kind of kids are you serving? 17 when to 24. When I say serving, I don't yeah. mean in the restaurant. I mean No, seven, ages 17 to 24, opportunity youth. So an opportunity youth is any youth that is not in school, not employed or both. So, um, not in, in school and not employed or both. So in the United States, okay. we have 15.3 million of those young people running around our country. And in New Orleans uh, metro area, we have about 25,000 plus running around. So, so. there's 25,000 people between the ages of 17 and 24 not in school or employed. Or both. Specifically running around? Well, I don't know about running around, but you know what happens. If, if they don't yeah. have something going on in their lives, the, sure. the drug dealers are, are picking them up and, and turning them into have you heard of, sellers. Have you heard of Homeboy Enterprises on the West Coast? I have. That was uh, pretty cool. I, uh, my folks did some uh, buying of their cookies. So apparently Homeboy em- Enterprises hires ex-cons. Gang uh, members. Gang yeah. members uh, uh, out of jail. Right. Yeah, and then they have a homegirls bakery. Right. So I, I believe the bakery was the first enterprise that they started, and uh, so my folks bought a bunch of their cookies to give out for Christmas. They're the That's best cool. cookies that I've ever had. <laughs> they're like better than the Girl they're, Scouts. Huh? They're like Grandma made them. Better yeah, than, better, than better than Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts for sure. Girl Scouts aren't making them, you know. Homeboys are making them. 
That's you interesting. Know? So they're actual ex gang members in where in California only. So Los far. Angeles is Los where it started. Right. Yeah. What, could we do that here, Lewis? I think we Did are doing it? it here. It's not a bakery, but between three programs, between Cafe Reconcile, Liberty's Kitchen, and Cafe Hope, I think we are doing that. You know, a lot of these kids that, that come in are high school dropouts and have been involved in the, in the police business. They've been incarcerated. Uh, some of them, 80% of them are parents coming in, can't take care of themselves or their families. And so that's what these three programs are about, you know, putting them on that path to self-sufficiency so they can start taking care of themselves. How do they find you? You know, we, we came up with a, an elaborate plan to recruit these kids, and we've never had to use it once. It's uh, the kids from the program are going back out into the neighborhoods and telling other kids about it. We've had grandparents come in and two days later show up dragging their grandkids behind them by the head, telling them they need to be in a program. We do have some relationships with some probation offices, uh, some church organizations bringing kids in. So mm-hmm. what happens? They come in, someone who doesn't have a job or doesn't go to school or mm-hmm. doesn't has been got out of jail or whatever, that you teach them to cook or to be a waiter or yeah both it's it's the hospitality restaurant industry as a whole but um what we found in the beginning was we were 12 weeks we're now 16 weeks so we were giving them the restaurant and hospitality skills getting them jobs and they were getting fired so you sit back and try to figure out what's going on why, and, and why were they getting fired stealing stuff no they just didn't they didn't have the uh they didn't have the skills they didn't have the life skills to get along with people and learn how to communicate so they were losing their jobs so now the program 16 weeks, and the first four weeks they spend in life skills. It's called Seeds of Success, but uh, they spend four weeks doing nothing but life skills, learning to communicate, learning anger management, how to be a team player. Um, get so to, we could learn all that in four weeks? Well, listen, they're coming, to us with, they're coming to us with nothing, and can you teach everything in four weeks? Absolutely not. But I think we're able to give them enough skills to survive in a workplace. Tell us about that. So are they getting paid while they're there? For the four uh, weeks that you're... No, they're not paid for the whole 16 weeks. No one um, gets paid? Well, they, they work dinners on Friday night, and they work catering events, and that's how they, they earn their money. The rest is just training. So you're not paying them anything? If we could find the support for it, we certainly would love to have a stipend. What are you talking about? If I go to eat there, do I have to pay for my lunch, or is that free? No, you have to pay for lunch. And well, that, where's that, that money going? That pays to the, that goes to you know staff and supporting the staff that teach these kids how to cook. I have three kids in the kitchen, a floor manager, and two people running life skills, and they don't work for for nothing. The rent's not free, so uh, you know it pays all the expenses. Couldn't you add a dollar to every meal or something? It's, it's not gonna a dollar a meal is not gonna help. I mean, at this point, you know we're averaging 20 people for lunch and probably 35 on a Friday night dinner. So there's it's it's not self-sufficient. The restaurant's only covering about 25% of the expenses. The rest of it is fundraising. It would cost us about $100,000 to put a stipend program in place. $100,000. That couldn't be that hard to get your hands on if you're running a charity. And I'm going to hire you as our development director if that's not hard. <laughs> hire Lindsay. That's what she does for a living. <laughs> Do you want to sort know? of, yeah. It does. It says it right here. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, listen, it's it's complicated, you know. It's uh, wow. it costs money to, to be able to, to give everything that these students need. It's mm. a, it's a, a holistic approach to what they need. So we're not trying to just teach them restaurant skills and throwing them out the door. We're trying to give them the life skills that they need to survive. So this is a school, really. Oh, absolutely. You're running, you're running a, so they're you come and you don't get paid to go to school. So these guys are coming and they do a 12-week course and then they're going to have a be able yeah. to get a job out of it. Yeah, it, it's you know it's uh, 12 weeks, 8:30 to 4:30. And um, we, we are definitely giving them the skills to get a job. We help with job placement when they finish. I'm really proud to say that we have a 72% job placement rate, which is uh, above the national average for programs like that. And we're not just putting them in, you know, dinky places. We've had students work inside the best restaurant group, Emerald's, Emerald Lagasse, Commander's Palace. So we've had some students come out and get some really nice jobs. Now, listen, in 16 weeks, we're not going to lie and say we can create chefs. We're giving them the skills that they need to get a line position. Um, That's you know? pretty cool, though. That you have a 16-week yeah. course, and you can go get a job at Emeralds or Commanders, even not, just working in the kitchen at anything. Yeah, not all of them. I mean, listen, we, you can. We, 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 really, good. we really take our time. And for a lot of our students, when they graduate from Cafe Hope, it's the first success that they've ever had in their lives. So we don't want to take them from success and put them back in the streets, and they start failing again. So not every student's ready for Emerald's Kitchen. Not every student's ready for a best kitchen. Some of them need to work at a pizza place. Some of them need to work at McDonald's. Well, that's but for these kids, it's about, it's about having success and building on success. Yeah. 
Well, not everybody wants to work it. That was a kind of heavy conversation, <laughs> too, compared to everything else that's going on. I mean, well, it's not our fault if you've got this serious kind I'm, of job. I, I apologize. I mean, let's get you know? back to talking about the that's dam. It's pretty interesting, stuff. though, didn't you think? I think that's pretty cool that you do. No, that. It, it really is. It's, uh, it's I a, haven't really got onto the you gave up. You gave up a career as yeah. a wealth management person to, to yeah. do this. Why it's, did you? Uh, why did you quit that? that? What, I, I was chairman your? of the board, and, and we fired our executive director, and I stepped up and said, I work for a family business. I can come manage for a couple of weeks until we find somebody. And, uh, you know, two weeks turned into a couple of months, and people started, people that know me started saying, hey, what's going on? I see a change in you. What's happening? You know, what's what's going on? And um, Wow. What kind I, of en- a, I enjoyed being there. Did I enjoyed you change, you change, like, your personality? No. Yeah, I think, you know, less stressful. I, I found that every day. When I left the office, that um, I could feel good about what I did, and that we made a difference in somebody's life. And um, you know, the, the former CEO, we were an affiliate ministry of Catholic Charities when we started. We broke away in July of 13, fr- formed our own 501c3, and the, the CEO then said, "You know, this is the Holy Spirit calling you to do what you're really meant to do." And so, uh, in a lot of ways, I believe that, and uh, I'm I'm happy. Uh, I I'm thought my, you might have formed your own religion maybe, no 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 not at all my, so you're still catholic I, i'm still catholic and you know I, I really every time i get the chance to thank my family my my wife and my kids have made huge sacrifices because obviously this job doesn't pay what the financial service industry paid and oh, they so, must uh, be pissed off at you secretly though, i think right? they hate my guts yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow do they i mean you don't you used to make a lot of money when you were a wealth management person and now you don't make so much money i did all right for myself you do okay yeah, I did okay. Did you salt some money away when you were? Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. You know, we we've learned to cut back as a family, and um, you know, the, the vacations aren't as elaborate. But um, no, this isn't about me. This is about we have a lot of kids in this community that need help, and when you when you finally have the opportunity to be around them, these are the type of kids that when when normal people look at them, they just go, hey, they had their opportunity, they, they screwed it up, whatever. But when you sit down and talk to these kids and learn about what they've been through, you can't judge people unless you've walked in their shoes. You know, I have kids who quit school at 10 years old, and when you ask why and they're honest with you, when you have that relationship and they say, my dad told me I was an effing bum and if I wanted to quit school, I could, at 10 years old, can you imagine hearing that? Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, you you got to find a way to help these kids. Well, go Do, back a step. Go sure. back one step. Why would somebody tell their kid he was a fucking bum at 10 years old? What's wrong with that Because guy? he probably had his parents tell him the same thing. Well, maybe Doesn't know any better. Maybe and one of these guys was a fucking bum, if you could, thought about it. I mean, it makes you want to find them and wring their neck for telling a 10-year-old kid right. that. But um, Is it common people are just uncaring about a 10-year-old child and don't care what happens to it? I think, sadly, um, in society and the way our government set up, a lot of these kids are simply paychecks. In what sense? Well, you know, you ask some of, the, some of the young ladies that have been to our program and they're 19 years old and they have three kids and you ask why and they just say if you walk in and ask for help and you don't have any kids, you can't get any help. But if you have kids, they jump and do whatever they can for you. So, Okay. <laughs> Mom. I don't think it's as black and white and cut and dry as that. I think there are issues that have gone on long and long and long to where you get to that, to that answer. Um, you know, you have a mom that's 19 with three kids. Well, why does a 19-year-old have three kids? Because we're not talking about reproductive health. We're not talking about, you know, sexual education. We're not giving them the education and the tools they need to be able to do something. And so they find themselves in a situation like that. I think people come in with all kinds of issues that, that aren't, you know, that... I think you're exactly right. You can't judge somebody by um, and the shoes they're walking until you actually have seen that. And I think it's too easy to say, well, yeah, it's just a paycheck. It's because that mom doesn't know any any no. better. She doesn't know where she can turn. She doesn't have the services and the needs that she needs. She's not getting those needs met. She probably doesn't have the education and the tools to be able to go in and provide for her family, for herself, for her children. Um, you know, I think it's just, it's an enormous list. And I think that for these kids, for, um, for many people in our community, certainly many people that I see, you know, through, through, um, through our office, through the public defender's office, you know, these are people we see that have the stacks, everything is stacked against them. And, um, you know, they have a huge criminal justice system. They have 
lack of education, they have addiction issues, they have mental health issues, they have all of these issues that are not being treated, that are not being addressed on the front end, and then they find themselves in the criminal justice system. So let's just stop for one second. You work in the public defender's mm-hmm. office. Yeah. What do you do in the public defender? I'm the communications director. And who are you communicating with? Us, the public. You, the public. Okay. You, the public. To so talk. you're the person to talk to about this. You're the communications yeah. director. Yeah. And listen, one of the things I want to say is I didn't mean to make it sound like that, but what we've seen is, you know, we have 18 and 19 year old kids that come into program and we're trying to get them ready for work and we have to not only battle catching them up to the rest of society but we have to battle parents because the parents don't want them to go get a job i can't tell you how many times we've had kids say my mom doesn't want me to work and it's like why the check will stop and that's a terrible thing to say to a kid but those are the things we battle we're not just you know we're just not just trying to help kids we're not battling the system right Mm -hmm. we're battling parents sometimes parents don't want them to how much is this check i have no idea i don't i don't know you don't know. Probably 800, 900 bucks a month. What you could get for, a, you know, Social Security for a, a kid. So this um, kid is living at home still. You're talking sure. about kids who live at home. Yep. Okay. Now these are the same people we're talking about that you see, Lindsay. Yeah. This is people in the criminal justice system. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, I think the sad reality about our, about our system and what's happening, is, it starts young. If you don't. If you don't give kids the resources that they need from the get-go, the education, the life skills, um, the the support, the counseling, just the the general kind of welfare care, mentoring of them, mentoring to teach them, you know, there are options, there are things out there, you know, this is how you this is how you you know be a good citizen. This is how you live in a community. This is how you um, can do. You know, all of these things that we learned in school that I feel like we all take for granted because it's like, oh, well, of course, yeah. When um, you say we all learned in school, what's the difference between these schools that the people who are in the criminal justice system that you guys come into contact with and the rest of us who aren't in the criminal justice system? I mean, I don't think it's any surprise that the the school system in New Orleans especially, um, and then you know certainly throughout Louisiana, is is not great. And unless you have massive amounts of money to send your kid to a private school um, to make sure that they get that education, they're already starting at a deficit. They're already starting against um, schools that don't have enough money to to have all the programs that they need, to have enough teachers, to have... Um, we haven't, re- haven't we rectified all this? No. 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 And so the problem is, is you have it, you start it then. And, you know, it just stacks and stacks and builds and builds and builds until now they really don't have an education and they really don't know any better. So what do they do? They turn to what they know. They turn to what they see. They turn to what they're surrounded by. And they are, you know, in surrounded by people that are dealing drugs, that are... Okay, so just go back one second here. So this whole public school revolution that we've had in New Orleans and the whole charter school system that's the leading light in the nation... And everybody wants to be like us. It's all nothing. It's all useless. I don't think that's fair to say. No, I don't think that's. Well, I um, thought that's what you just said. We haven't rectified anything. No, and I don't. I don't think we haven't. I think we have rectified. Yes, um, but I think there is still far, far to go. And I don't think New Orleans and Louisiana are alone in that. Um, well, that's a good question. How do we stack up against other cities like us? I think it just takes. I, I think it takes a change in the mindset of people's and you know people in charge people with money people that can make these things happen to say we need to invest from the get go in the future of these children because they are our future and if we want to if we want to shrink our criminal justice system if we want to reduce recidivism and I I talk about that because that's what I do and that's what I know it has to start somewhere cuz by the time they reach me in my office There's not a lot that can be done because now you're talking about people with a felony record, with convictions on their record that can't get jobs, they can't get certification, they can't get housing, they can't get um, federal school loans, they can't get um, they can't get so many things. And so, what do they do when they're out of jail? Cafe Reconcile, Cafe Hope are amazing, amazing programs, but I think that. while there certainly should be more programs like that, there need to be more programs on 
on the other end with adults and getting them more reentry, getting them um, expanding. Oh my God, if we could bring homeboy industries here, you know, because to have somebody take a chance on somebody that may have really just messed up, really made a huge mistake, may have had, um, you know, addiction issues, mental health issues that are long withstanding. And now they're out and they want to do something. They want to make a change because I have many, many people um, that want to, but they don't, the options aren't there for them. You know, no one wants to hire a convicted felon. Um, So without those options, I don't really know what to tell people. I don't know what to tell people to do and what they can do. Yeah, to that point, you know, two things. First of all, we we had a fundraiser and um, we had in our building, they used to have a homeless shelter on the second floor. And so we had a bunch of stuff left over and we brought them down and said, you know, it was a, it's like a garage sale. I said, you know, pick out what y'all need, take anything you want. And it was a little four year old boy that came down and one of our board members had a grandchild with him that was four. The difference between these two kids at four years old was unbelievable. You could tell at four years old, those paths were already starting to separate and there was no way that young man that was in the homeless shelter was ever going to catch up with that young lady that was four years old going to a private school. It just wasn't going to happen. It would have taken a miracle. And then to speak about, you know, people coming in with, with records, I had a young man that I've been personally trying to mentor for almost four years now. Uh, I knew. He disappeared for about six months. He would always call. He disappeared for about six months. He walked in the back of the restaurant one day and... You know, I just looked up and he was standing there and his head was down and you could tell he was down and out. And I said, you don't have to tell me. I know you were in jail, right? And he, he said, yeah. So he did six months. I said, all right, what can we do? He said, I need a job because I got probation fees to pay and everything else. That's the unfair part mm-hmm. about that system. You ask a young African-American man, you want to stay in jail or you want to be out on probation? What do you think he's going to say? I want probation. But as soon as he gets out, you start paying probation fees. And if you can't pay your probation fees, they throw you back in jail again. So he said, I need a job. The first thing we did is we had a Popeye's just built on the corner, right on the corner of Cafe Hope. And we walked over through our garden into Popeye's and said, I got this young man. He's a good kid. Can you give him a chance? And the lady said, I can't even take an application from him if he's got, if he's, if he's got a record. So he couldn't even work at Popeye's. Hmm. So because of our connections, you know, we were able to, uh, Gordon Stevens, who owns the Steamboat Natchez here in New Orleans, is a board member and a really, really good man. We're able to cross the bridge the next day and get him on with the with the Natchez, you know. Um, but it, it takes people like Gordon Stevens mm-hmm. and it takes opportunities like this, like that for these guys to be able to get back on their feet again. And I'm really proud to say that he's on the job for eight months now. So uh, mm-hmm. turning his life around Good slowly heavens. but surely. Okay. And um, how much is a probation fee? Do you know? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Alex, what are you paying on probation fees? <laughs> it's it's breaking my back. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that you had to pay the probation. I thought that was a federal program or a statewide program. Built into your fines and fees. It's like user pays for probation. I never heard that in my life. Did you know that, Andrew? Didn't know that's amazing. That's insane. Isn't and, it? And, and Isn't the sad that? part is a lot of these guys. Can you pay it in crack? Then they're not going to get an opportunity, you know, to work anywhere. And so you, you're faced with, do you start dealing again? Or do you go back to jail? And so what do you think they're going to do? They don't want to go back to jail. They're going to go back to the life that they had before. They can't change. It's, and we're it's talking about 25,000 people in this yeah. situation. I mean, not all of them are in the criminal justice no, system. No, but there's 25,000 people, age 70 to 24. Yeah, and you want to know why we're broke, start looking at that. So here's the statistics out of the Cowan Institute of Tulane University. An opportunity youth, ages 17 to 21, costs you and I, the taxpayers, about $18,000 a year. That's what we spend on them. 18,000 times 25,000. Yeah. Well, wait, it gets better well, than that. Because if we, can work that if we don't change their path by the time they reach 21, chances are that they'll always be on public payroll. And so over their lifetime, either through imprisonment or through Section 8 or EBT cards, whatever it may be, they're going to cost us about $780,000 over their lifetime. So start multiplying 780,000 times 5.3 million, and you want to know why the country's in bad shape you want to know why the city's in bad shape and so we need to find a way to invest in these kids it's I've got about five thousand dollars for I've, these kids to come through my I've program i've just come up with it right now 
Each one of these kids costs us seven hundred eighty thousand dollars over the course of a lifetime. That's right. Okay. Now, wouldn't each one of these kids like to get their hands on, say, wouldn't this be a life-changing thing if we could give each one of these kids like $200,000 all at the same time right now? Okay. Yeah. So what about every single kid who we'd normally give $780,000 over the course of a lifetime, we'd give them $200,000 in cash today? Sounds like a horrible idea. I don't know if I want to be in town for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, they, just, they just don't have the skills. I don't know what I would do with $200,000 in my hands yeah. right now. They so. just don't have the skills to manage that. Right. You know, but it would be well, a leg up. What, listen, it's going to save us five hundred thousand dollars. No, save us five hundred thousand dollars a person, <laughs> and everybody could do something. You could invest it. You could go somewhere else. You if they buy knew, a house. If they, if they knew how to invest, if they knew how to buy a house, that'd be fantastic. But the truth is, they'd probably take it and spend it on going out and buying a car. And well, a certain number of people would. Yeah, somebody yeah. would blow it. Some, but some a certain number, a number of people wouldn't. And if, you, if it came with you had to go to the Lewis Oroka School of Wealth Management, yeah. you could clean up here, dude. Oh, we'd have some broke people around here. <laughs> yeah, but it would be a start, wouldn't it? I mean, some people would succeed. No, absolutely. I, I get your point, but it's uh, okay, well, it's just it's it. just more complicated than that, I think. Mm. Sorry. you got to teach a man a fish, and I give the man the fish, you know. That's a great... Somebody should write a song with Somebody that. Somebody should, song. yeah. Hey, talking of songs and <laughs> records. Alex, do you have a record out lately on your record? Nothing, or nothing. Nothing. Well, the Tin Men have a new record. That's one of my bands. Yeah. Um, that came out last year. That's um, new enough. What are you doing these days? What am I doing? Yeah. Uh, she, what am I doing? Um, Other than the dam and probation. Yeah, I'm working on the dam. I got a dynamo that is <laughs> needs a little help. Are you playing a lot of? Are you playing with yourself or in one of these? You're in a lot of. I'm bands. playing with myself <laughs> right now. Actually, <laughs> um, I'm very discreet, <laughs> but I am playing with myself. Okay. Yes. Do you, um, are you still? You're, you're in a lot of bands around town. A lot of bands. A lot of bands. So what's going uh, on? What's going on? Uh, I'll be playing tonight uh, with a band called the Tin. This is the Tin Men I mentioned right. uh, just just now. Uh, and uh, I'll be playing this weekend with uh, Debbie Davis and the Mesmerizers. Uh, I'll be playing Friday night somewhere. I'll bet. Um, it's all on the website. I, I don't. You can't you know, remember it all. I, that's why I have to have the team. Yeah, yeah. The Absolutely. Team the keeps social me, media people keeps me focused. And, right. Uh, you so, know. so you're in the mes- you Debbie Davis. I just. So I'm in Debbie gotta, Davis. I'm going to do what I do. You just wait for the phone call and just go. We. I just, just, I just, just get in the limo and go where you're told. Right. I'm escorted to the next engagement. Right. So you're with the Debbie Davis and the Mesmerized, the Tin Man. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Happy Talk Band. I play with Paul Sanchez. Um, I play with, uh, I do a brunch uptown uh, at a place called Chafalaya, a band called uh, the New Orleans Fabricators. Uh huh. What day is your brunch? It's, uh, it's either Saturday or Sunday, mm. depending on. Uh, I think that's go. one of the best those brunches are, Those are town. the big brunch days. Um, <laughs> we tried a Wednesday brunch. And, uh, so, strangely I'm enough. I'm all for a Monday brunch. I love Monday brunch. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are for the Monday brunch. <laughs> a lot of people I know are mm. very pro Monday brunch, but uh, it's not working out. Um, I do, yeah, I do the brunch. What's uh, up what with else? the fabricators? Why, why are you so happy about that? It's just, you know, uh, it's just a great band. You know, Carlo Nuccio on the drums and Joe Cabral on the, on the electric bass. And we, uh, we play, you oh, know, that's cool. brunch favorites of yesterday and today. And, uh, what's, a, what's a brunch favorite? Oh, Girl you know. Girl from Ipanema? That's, well, you're not far off the mark. Uh, anything from the Burt Bacharach songbook probably oh, would okay. uh, make your eggs go down very easily. <laughs> Oh, you guys must be having some fun doing that. Oh, we have a b- great I can see time. why it makes you smile. It's a great it's time. It's not that serious of a gig. Well, well that's a know, cool it's, place. It's, I love a gig where there's no obligation to clap. Right. Because it just takes the pressure off. Because You like no one listening to you. I, it's very reassuring to know that no one's listening. <laughs> That's why he likes to play <laughs> with himself. That's why, yeah. that's why you go into the business. That's why I play with myself. That's why you go into the business, right? I so no one would listen to you. Yeah. When people do start listening, it's very unnerving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It comes with a certain amount yeah. of responsibility. I mean, you should know that. Yeah. Well, no. The, well, luckily, the, no one listens to this, so I'm sorry. You could a black exactly screen to I mean. sit behind. Yeah. 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 Then could, no one would... I could be the man behind the curtain. It I'd is. be very happy there. It does take a lot of courage to expose yourself to other people to, to get right. up and play and guitar so, and, and, and say And I wish I had things. that courage. Yeah. Uh, you know, people do die of exposure every day. Well, so I try to keep that in mind when I'm... Great point. 
when I'm getting my calendar together. Yeah. We yeah. can offer you some life skills program. I'm okay. ready. Cafe Hope. <laughs> Cafe Hope. Take me, please. Hey, why don't you play something while you're here if you feel like oh, it? The okay. guitar is almost within it's right reach. right there. I can yeah. always get it. Yeah, what, do, right. you, what do you think would be good? I, you know, we, uh, we were talking about the restaurant business. Yeah. Um, you know, I used to tell people to go to hell. Now I told them to go into the restaurant business. <laughs> Here's a song about... Um, let's see if this will work. Uh, about uh, for anybody who ever uh, quit the restaurant business to pursue their dreams of stardom and then had to go crawling back to ask for that job back it goes like this oh Mr. Selak can I have my job back I've run out of money again The last time I saw you, I was singing hallelujah, I'm so glad to be leaving this restaurant, now the only thing I want is to have my old job back again I'll clean the tables I'll do the creams and I'll get down on my knees and scrub behind the steam table Oh Mr. Selak I didn't think I'd be back I worked here Last year, remember I came when Annie was going on vacation And I stayed on almost till December Now the only my old job back again I won't be nasty to customers no more when they send their burger back I'll tell them that I'm sorry waiting tables ain't that bad since I've seen you last, I've waited for some things that you would not believe to come true. The forty million three hundred and seven people who want to get famous. Now the only thing I want is to have my old job back again. I'll clean the tables, I'll do the creams, and I'll get down on my knees and scrub behind the steam table. Oh, my goodness. Fabulous.
fabulous Alex McMurray. Not it, letting us down for a moment. That was that, as funny as That usual. could be Louie's song if he'd just add in begging for money to fund the program. That could be it. I'd do all the things he just <laughs> talked about. What's your last name again? Arocha. Arocha. Yes. i got to think of something that rhymes with Arocha. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, it's not pop. as good as Really. Yeah, not as good as Really. Yeah, at really all. rhymes with a lot of stuff. That's a funny song. Is any of that based on any uh, personal experience? No, I didn't even write that song. Where'd that come from? Uh, uh, His team. A woman named Terry Roach wrote it. Terry Roach from a band called the Roaches. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. They're from New Jersey, though. Well, do you play that regularly, or did you? I s- do. It's a funny song. It's right a funny it? song. Yeah. But it's the only restaurant song I got. <laughs> so we were talking about restaurants. <laughs> it's a good. Well, I'll make you play another one in a minute if you like. I see, you want to play I, one of your own? It's the only restaurant song I have. It doesn't have to be about a restaurant. Well, we have to change the it's, But it's it's easily as 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 bitter and twisted as one of your songs, though. I wouldn't say bitter. I'd say well, <laughs> well, you know, somewhat redemptive. Uh, okay, redemptive. But a lot of your stuff has that sort of same flavor, that sort yeah. of wry observations of human nature. But, yeah. well, sort of a upbeat kind of a, but I would say bitter. What would you say? Uh, just extremely popular music that is <laughs> timeless, <laughs> that goes down. Universal you know, themes. Yes, uh, timeless music, universally beloved. It's, uh, that's okay. how I would describe my music. Timeless and universally beloved. I, I, I think that's accurate. Yes. But, uh, okay. With a, but with a slight edge. There's nothing wrong with having There's an edge to it. It's edgy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very soft edge. Right. Okay. Kind of sand I like down. that last song. I remember that song you did on the show last time you were on the show. What was, was, what did was you do last called? time? Um, if you can't make it here, you, uh, be, you better not leave. Yes. I thought that was one of the... I, th- I thought that should have been a billboard. you said at the time that you were going to make that your theme song. We should have. It's, it's a great, a great song. song, isn't it? Love that song. You, should we make you play it again later on? I don't mind. Okay. It really is. Uh, you guys should, well, especially these two guys should hear that, right? Mm-hmm. This is a song about, about New Orleans, about how, well, I mean, why should I say You want to just play it? I, I, yeah. I've got nothing Shall better we? to do. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go. Andrew, I'm going to make you play a song after this one. I, what do you think? Do you. I should have, have him music. at Local Food Fest. It's a fundraiser we got coming up in May. He should Lo- be on stage for Well, you're going to pay him, right? Um, no, 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 no. Are you kidding? You <laughs> don't pay anybody, not even musicians? <laughs> I don't pay myself. What are you talking you about? You don't get paid. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't pay for this either. <laughs> All right. Um, now, this is a song. Uh, not. This is a, like a public service announcement song. A, they used to talk about in New Orleans about the brain drain. Kind of miss the brain drain now. Here's a song about uh, for those of you who might be thinking of leaving town. <sighs> Here we go. Ah, somebody told me you're leaving. You'll be gone by St. Joseph's Day. You're long in the tooth, and you've burned up your youth on a thousand and one holidays. Now life is a grand ultimatum shape up or ship out they say well i don't mean to scare you but you better beware when you're finally on your way cause if you can't make it here if you can't make it here if you can't make it here you better not leave Well, Chicago broke both my shoulders And Detroit's a sweet piece of ass And Cleveland is a case nearly up to my waist And she's growing up way too fast And Vegas is freezing and empty And Frisco is dour and prim And Portland's a pain Never gets any rain And your chances are gonna be slim Cause if you can't make it here If you can't make it here If you can't make it here You better not leave If you can't make it there Well, you won't have a prayer If you can't make it here You better not be 
because Memphis will eat you for breakfast. But Nashville will have you for lunch. And where Philly's concerned, well, that's no place to learn that you really just can't take a punch. And Boston's all puppies and rainbows. And Baltimore's nice to the nice. And New York, New York just won't stay on your fork as easy as your red beans and rice. So if you can't make it here, if you can't make it here, if you can't make it here, you bet. Why aren't you guys singing? Yeah, come on. Here we go. If you, you can't, can't Make it here if you can't make it here if you can't make it here you better not leave don't leave if you can't make it here you better not leave Okay, that definitely is going to be our theme song, Andrew, don't you think? Uh, yeah, if you a, can't make it here, you better not leave the fabulous Alex McMurray. Alex, wh what record could we steal that off of on Spotify? From, uh, a Tin Men record called uh, Avocado Woo Woo. Mm, Avocado Woo Woo. One. And that's available for stealing off Spotify and various other not on YouTube. Spotify. It's not on Spotify. No, that, it's for sale. That means it's not on Spotify. So you don't put your stuff up there? Not if I can help it. Right. Can't, I mean, you can't help no, it, right? I prefer you don't to have... sell my music. Right. The, so you're not... Revenue. Yeah. i got to raise revenue. Because <laughs> i got this dam. you got the dam to fund. <laughs> right. And Until I can't just talk about, like, you know, it's 10 the theme or of 20 the day, raise revenue. Revenue is the word. Do you have um, anyone doing social media for you or anything? Because Lindsay can totally help you out with it. That's what she does. <laughs> I thought this was what that... I thought that's what this was. I know. The, the, well, this can help. You know, there's, there's three or four people. Is there anti-social media? Anti-social... That's a good question. Yeah. Lindsay, could you ha can you really? Um, is that like the dark web? The dark is there such a thing? I don't think you want to get involved in the dark web. No, I, what is I, the dark web? It's where the anti-social media. It's is. where the bitcoins and so on. All right. What exactly is that actually, Lindsay? The, the dark, dark web? web. Yeah. It's where the dark, nasty, bad things of the internet happen. Like. Dirty bombs. Dirty bombs. Black market selling. Hitmen. Hitmen. Sex slaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how would you get like a bomb or a sex slave? So I don't what do you, know. What do you type in? I think, I think it's dark I'm really dark sorry to say I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> dark Google. Just dark Google. Is there, a, is there an anti-Google type thing where you can search the dark web for a, get a bomb and a sex slave? I really don't know. You don't know. I just got to tell you, just an observation. You, sir, have the greatest job in America. <laughs> just want you to know that. If you think you don't get paid much, try doing this. <laughs> yeah, but you have so much fun every day, for God's sake. Well, it is a lot of fun, yeah, but you know the responsibility? <laughs> yeah. It's very stressful coming up with well, this stuff. Not as much stress as building a dam, I'm sorry. Well, there is a dam to be had, though. But seriously, for a minute, well, not that seriously, but the money, your music it's okay, is... okay, I've got Chinese inspectors, so it's going very smoothly. <laughs> Your music is not on Spotify. None of this, none of your uh, some music Some of it might have slipped written. through over the years. But you I try to regulate it so it's not. So uh, you're like the... Yeah, it's, like, it's my choice. You right. Know? You, 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 you sign up for it. I mean, people willingly give their stuff away, which is fine. But, you know? And are people buying your music for real, though? Yes. They are. So yeah. if you keep it off of Spotify, people will buy it. Well, that's... I mean, either that that's or they working. will find their friend and burn their CD or something. I don't know. But that's not a business model that's working for most people, apparently, because there's millions of records on Spotify, so... Yeah, well, think? it's not... I mean, I don't know. It's not, I don't worry about that. You know, I just worry about my stuff. Uh, I mean, I, my stuff's available at the show, or, and it's on my website, and it's on iTunes, and, you know... So we can go stuff. to alexmcmurray.com yeah. and just buy it. On the dark the web. The traditional way, on the dark web. Yeah. So it's... AlexMcMurray.com yeah. slash dark uh, web. Slash dark web. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good to know. I hope yeah. someone on your team has advised you <laughs> away from the dark web. Oh, Some yeah. of your 900 people. I'd love to know how to get onto the dark web. Look, Lewis is trying it right now on I'm, his phone. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm it. Are you going to go to AlexMcMurray.com? You could buy something right now. I am. I'm going to go to AlexMcMurray.com. Okay. Good idea. I I'd, I'd like Lindsay to help you out with doing some social media because I'm just looking at the bio while you were playing there. She's done some amazing stuff here. 
Yeah. She was a senior publicist for boutique agency Liz Lapidus, public relations in Atlanta. She managed accounts in restaurants. Lewis, pay attention to this. Retail, real estate, hospitality. You're asking me to do two things. And health and beauty. She's a Texas native. Yeah. Transplanted to New Orleans in 2007 following a 4.5 year love affair with LSU. You have to stay an extra six months to LSU to graduate. That doesn't mean... I had to get an extra football season. Right there. No, I had to get an extra football season. You played football? I mean, I didn't. What were you doing? I was watching. Watching us win national champions. You can still watch LSU games even if you're not You can. It would have been much cheaper to do it elsewhere. Well, yeah, you can just watch it here at Wayfair, actually. I think they have the game on. My my daughter graduated from LSU in her freshman year. I called and said, she called at a halftime, and she said, we're not doing too good here. Uh, I said, well, I guess it's going to be an early night. And she goes, Dad, I go to LSU. Win or lose, we still booze. That scares a dad to death, i got to tell you. <laughs> she must have been drunk when she called you. I think she was. Yeah. What does she do now? She is uh, applying for PA school. She wants to be a physician's assistant and um, waiting to see if she can get an LSU med. Okay. Fantastic. So she wants to be a doctor, in other words. Yeah, I think it's a physician's assistant is just below a doctor. You can do everything a doctor does, but you have to be supervised by a physician. So hmm. she can... Your prescriptions and you can write prescriptions. I yeah. don't think she can write prescriptions. No, she can't. No. no, you have to have a. Well, what uh, the hell she, she wasting can. a pen? Oh, that yeah. would be great. I, I thought you had to have a doc uh, uh, license. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. What, yeah, what, what does Chris say? When you go into Chris says you can write prescriptions. Yeah, I was going to say, what's she oh, wasting a time awesome. for? If she can't do that. I mean, no, uh, I think <laughs> when you when you go into it, even like cardiac. Uh, a lot of uh, sports medicine stuff, you, you're not seeing doctors anymore. You're seeing a physician's assistants, and they, they can do everything a doctor can do, except the doctor has to review and sign off on their files. Yeah. Is that only in Louisiana, I would imagine? No, that's everywhere. Everywhere. Sure. You don't have to. It's Anyone can write a prescription just from doing that. Like it's month. the wave of the future. With Medicare the way it is, medical and insurance, they're going to be less doctors and more PAs. And how long is a PA school? Um, I think PA school is 38 months. 38 months, that's what, that's four years. A little over, a little over three years. Three years. And yeah. you can write a prescription. That's the gestation period of a rhino. <laughs> 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 Don't ask me how I know there's that. A, there's a song there somewhere. 38 months. I mean, it's just a weird n- number of months. Yeah. It is, isn't it? It's well, a long time to be pregnant. A lot of unhappy rhinos out there. Hmm. Do they have sex even while they're pregnant, the rhinos? Some rhinos are into that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good that you know that sort of thing. Well, you have time. You have time to catch up on stuff when That's you're fine. not That's on Spotify. Yeah. You're policing the dark web, policing. reading about rhinos. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hey, listen. You know, things are getting a bit serious here. We have to get out of here. I have to. Go to I haven't read any of these sponsor messages, and you, you haven't played a song, so we have to do both of those. If, we had if, a pretty heavy show for you, like we you should today. do. What's that? If that's what you feel like we should I think do. we should. Don't you think we should have Andrew play a song for like, sure? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have to read these, otherwise what if, things are going to go what bad. What if you had Alex play some background music while you read them, and I went and grabbed my guitar in the meantime? Okay. Is that cool with you? Sure. You have to play some sort of upbeat, sort of... Uh, Who said it has to be upbeat? I think... Oh, you know, what should it be? Well, tell him what to play. I have an idea. No, whatever, whatever. Anything that he feels should well, be you know, the so give him some direction. Give him some direction. He's an artist. He knows how to do this. Okay, sponsor-type music. <laughs> Thanks very much to these people who have made our show possible today. Petite Pet Care. If you're going out of town or you have a crazy schedule, the folks at Petite Pet Care will take care of your pet in his or her own home. For loving care when you're not there, visit on the dark web petitepetcare.com. Thanks also to the fabulous Basics Swim and Gym where you can get a full range of fashion swimsuits, work out in yoga clothes with style. Basic Swimming Gym is on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. And our friends at Hangover Destroyer, the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. Go to the Hangover Destroyer website at hdestroyer.com. Write happy hour in the coupon code and get 30% off of Hangover Destroyer. And you too can seize the door. Background music today provided by Alex McMurray, Beatbox. Hey, I want to keep this group going. I'm going to all five of us come to Cafe Hope, and we can do lunch at Cafe Hope, I think. All yeah, five of us. free lunch. Yeah. Alex, thank you. That was beautiful. That reminds me of brunch brunch at Cafe Chuffle. I don't know what made me think of it. We had a pretty heavy show for you. Very punchy. That was good. 
I didn't even get to all of the exciting things happening with us. What is happening with you? Major, major budget shortfall. Budget shortfall <laughs> yeah, at see? the at the public. Is, I told you the theme of the of the show today. Is at great the public, revenue. can you play a budget shortfall background music? <laughs> budget shortfall at the at the public defender's office. Yeah. Hey, that's a great idea. A public shortfall blues. We'll do a follow-up show. I got the public shortfall. Well, wait, but because budget budgets budget are being blues. budgets are being cut left and right. Yeah. But it's being slashed left and right. And that includes the public defender's office. It does. It does, it does. I got the budget slash blue. Means a not good situation. With this our means you could, be, you could be looking after your own toddler pretty soon all day. <laughs> yes. Yes. Is that yes. for real? The public defender's office could be closed down. You just I am exaggerating. Not, I am not exaggerating. That is, a, that is a serious issue. The public defender's office actually in Plaquemines Parish just shut down indefinitely. Indefinitely well, means Paris, that means it's closed down. There is no well, public defense. That means down. you say you are entitled to the to an attorney. You have the right to an attorney. Not in Plaquemines Parish. Not in Plaquemines Parish. Parish. And unless you have money to pay for one. What exactly is Plaquemines Parish? Down it's our friends to the southeast. But what cities are in Plaquemines Parish? Del Chase, Port Sulphur, Venice. Thank you. So the New Orleans boy. So if you commit a crime in Port South of Venice or Bell Chase, Bell Chase there's if a fair you chance you're going to jail. Of a crime. If you're because accused of a crime, there's a fair chance you get. Okay, if you're people. accused of a crime, you're not going to have an attorney. Correct. So you're going to stay in jail for a long time yep. until you get representation. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? That is right. So you get arrested, rightly or wrongly pending a trial Mm -hmm. you can't afford an attorney right so you're not ever going to get to trial right right so you're going to fester in jail you're going to sit there your case is going to deteriorate you're you're going to lose your job you're going to lose your house you know all of those major things and even if you didn't do anything. You've just been wrongly arrested, but you don't have them. This is not funny, really. That's right. I don't know, no, I don't know what you're not, laughing at. I'm the the music is most excellent, but no, it is not. It is not a laughing situation. matter. It's very serious. It yeah. sounds bad. Yeah. No. It's bad. And this could happen in New Orleans. It's bad. It, yes. it, it is happening in New Orleans. It we is, currently what? are refusing cases. We currently have a wait list for cases. Um. And so I get arrested. I can't. Af- Thank you, Alex. Okay. Excellent. That was funny. So I can't. I can't get an attorney mm-hmm. because I can't afford one. There right. isn't going to be a public defender That's assigned right. to my case. That's right. So I'm going to stay in the OPP. You're going to stay in indefinitely. Jail. Yes. And how long can that go on? Because OPP is already f- filled up, and there's already people pissed off about that constantly. That's in the news always. Right. Right. So what's the reality of what's going to happen? Um, the reality is, if you can figure out a way to bond out. And get yourself an attorney. No, but I mean, that's the, what you do. I mean, Otherwise, wide. you will sit. You will sit until the judiciary, until the court can find an attorney, someone to represent you. Yeah, but that's an insane uh, theory because everyone's getting arrested every day. There's another You're ten, twenty, me. and then the, so the jail is going to fill up mm-hmm. pretty quick, like within probably three weeks, yep. if not shorter. Then you, what happens? You have this thing called the right to a speedy trial, and if you don't meet that. Okay, so you get released after a certain. Amount yeah, of time. so how many days do you have to be in jail? So how many days, and then you just get out, right? Right. How many days is it? Mm, don't, it's tell, different. don't tell me you don't know that. Well, it's different per per charge and per um, per arrest. So. Is it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, what is it for, like a traffic fine, unpaid? That one. I Suppose don't Alex know. had one. I'm hoping that you're not in jail for not paying a traffic fine oh, because bet, that I is a debtor's prison, which was. It's uh, supposed to have gone away a long time okay, ago. Okay, so um, what if I, like Alex and I get in a bar fight after this, and he knocks me out, and he gets arrested for assault? Yes. He doesn't have any money to pay, to pay for an attorney. How long is he going to be in jail for? Um, I think that the district attorney has anywhere from... Give it to me straight. What's that? Give it to me straight. Yeah. Well, you're going to sit for 60 days or so until they decide what to do with Man, your case. sitting for 60 days sounds pretty good. Yeah? <laughs> Just sitting. Just sitting right sitting? here is wonderful. Not worrying about the dark web. Just sitting. <laughs> you got 60 days to think about why you hit oh, me in that bar fight, and like then you're that. out on the street. And that's it. There's no case, nothing, right? Deal. That doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> but but, doesn't I mean, mean that sounds like... 
That sounds about as but, fucked up as the justice system but is But let's today. be honest, there are cases that sometimes take four or five years to go to trial. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and in that time... But they won't if you don't have an attorney. They take four or five years to, because you have an attorney assigned to your case and he's got 20,000 other cases. It doesn't can, mean that, it, that your case is going away. No, but isn't there a statute of limitations or whatever it's called on how long you have to spend in jail before they bring you a case? If they don't bring you a case, they have to yes. let you out. Yes, but so this could work for this. Would be they're not, not bringing charges. They are still bringing charges. The district attorney's office is still going to file charges. He's still you just don't have charges. representation. Yeah, but if You're you don't have representation and they haven't brought your case, don't you just get kicked out back onto the street? No. No, no. Once your once no. your case is accepted. Oh, then you could sit in jail indefinitely. Well, I guess you know what you're talking about. That sounds weird. I don't understand. It's not really what you would call a justice system. But it's not going to go that way because there's no room for people. Once the jail is filled up, which will, will be like by ways, Friday. They will ship them away. We have people that have been shipped up to other parishes in the state. Should we get together, pull our money, and build yes. a prison? No. <laughs> no. We don't need more prisons. We don't need more prisons. We don't need more beds. It's a growth we industry. I'm just saying. We can build a dam. I can definitely build a yeah. prison. Yeah. And homeboy industries, instead of baking cookies, that would we be could build great, jails. The great thing to get into is jails. Mm -hmm. No. Homeboy. No, 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 no. It's a whole different meaning of the word home. The point is we're trying to get people out of the system, not keep them there. More jails, right. they will just fill them. But if we, if these guys own the jail, then they could just get people out. Hmm. I don't know. I think we're almost onto something. We just are missing one element of this business plan here. Well, Lewis can hook us up because he's a business planner. I'm serious. This group's got to stay together. We got to get back together and do lunch or something. <laughs> okay. All right. Andrew's going to play us a song, and then we're going to almost. We're solving all the world's problems here. So. <laughs> Picked up some granite in Kansas, some coal from California. Oh, when I leave a foreign land, I always take a little land along. I go and I fill up a tube sack with a handful of river rocks. Oh, when I leave a foreign land, I always take a little land along. All my life, I've been pick, I've been picking up stones. I got land on my windowsill enough to fill a wishing well. I could go right down the line, name every stone for every time. Lately, I've been wondering though. Pockets filling up with stones Is this the way I try to slow me down? I met a, a girl from up north Like nobody I met before well, She's 20 karat gold And all I've done is wander around But when it comes to settling down, well, I know what I built, foundation on. Yeah, I built them right on top of these stones. Yeah. Come to settling down Well I know what I built foundation on Yeah and I built them right on top of these stones Yeah I'd start with some coal from California Throw in some Texas shale might as well Then maybe some silt stone Some sandstone Some limestone Put it all in a grindstone Grind it up good Bet if I could add a little water Let it dry Been picking up stones. Oh my 
Thank you, Sandra. Too hot. Well, it has been an unbelievable day. Two of New Orleans' greatest, if not two New Orleans' two greatest songwriters, Andrew Duhon and Alex McMurray, at the same table. Don't you think, guys? Yeah, absolutely. Lewis? I had a wonderful time. Again, luckiest man in the world right here. Okay. Incredible. Let's, and we've all got free lunch coming up at Cafe Hope. Yes. The five of us. Let's do it. Free lunch. This is awesome. Do we have to leave a tip for anybody seeing they don't get paid? I guess big deal, right? Leave a tip for me. Just, uh, Very nice. Learn, learn how to run an organization. That's a good enough tip. Lewis Arocha, where can we find out? It's <laughs> called cafehope.org, I assume, or something like that? Cafehope.org. We're uh, open for lunch Tuesday through Friday, 11 to 2, and we do a Friday night dinner. That's uh, BYOB. We don't have a liquor license, but you can bring your own wine and beer. No corkage fees. Love and tell us where it is. 1101 Barataria Boulevard. And can we Morale. buy can we buy drugs off the guys there? No, we no we can't not, do that. Not okay. encouraging that. Not encouraging drugs. Okay, Lindsay Hortenstein from uh, Uptown New Orleans. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us as well. Do we? Thank uh, you. Can we find out anything about uh, how to donate money? Is there a GoFundMe for the? Uh, you Public say Defender's that, office? and we had one actually in the um, in the fall. We had a, a crowdfunding. <laughs> For, for the Public Defender's Office. For oh Public God, Defense, yeah. John Oliver on back. HBO actually featured it. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, it's a good um, thing to find there out is, right there when is, we're leaving. Right. There is lots and lots of stuff going on. Um, not really great stuff right now, but you can um, you can Google Orleans Public Defenders, and there is a slew of, of stuff being written currently um, mm. about it. A lot of attention um, kind of on this crisis that's happening in New Orleans and across Louisiana. There is... The fundamental right to um, to counsel is being decimated, and um, you know it's one of the it's the Sixth Amendment. It's one of the first ten. It's, it's kind the of Sixth Amendment. Sixth Amendment. Anyone and know what the Sixth Amendment is? Alex, any idea? Lewis? Right to a fair trial. That's right. Yep. Aha! Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Nice right to an good attorney. Good job. Right, right to, to an attorney, attorney is the Sixth Amendment. Your Miranda rights. You said if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be given to you, and that's us. And if there is no us, there is no. There's no criminal justice system. Oh, jeez, it's, it's a shame to get onto that right when we have to leave. But yeah. if that's in the Constitution, how can it be taken away? I, uh, you know. Ask Donald Trump about that one. <laughs> Ask Bobby. Bobby um. Jindal, he's gone. <laughs> Bobby Jindal. So I wonder what yeah. he is. What is Bobby Jindal yeah. doing? I wonder. So we're at www.opdla.org, and you can keep up with us there. There is a donate page. Opdla.org. Um, is it funded by the state? We are a combination of the state local, and a massive amount of fines and fees. Fines and fees, okay. is <coughs> traffic tickets and... Oh, okay. Um, all right. All sorts of stuff. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, yeah, Lindsay Yeah, thanks Horton's for having me. Riley? Really? Really. Really. Yeah. really. It's been a really a pleasure. Absolutely. Alex we'll McMurray. see you around the neighborhood. Yeah. Alex McMurray, don't look for his music on uh, <laughs> we'll Spotify. We'll look for you on Spotify. Just go to Alex, yeah. alexmcmurray.com on the dark web. Yeah. And that's it. Thanks so much. That's been Happy Hour for another week. The producer of our show is Graham DePonte. Our associate producer and technical director is Chris Kehoe. Christian Unruh is our music director, and our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can sit around a table for about an hour and stay upright, drop us a line. Our address is on our website. It's neworleans.com. We'll also find out many other happy hours to enjoy, along with some other shows we make here out to lunch with Peter Asciutti live from Commander's Palace. True to the game. With the hilarious Chris True, Midnight Menu Plus One with Margot Moss and the man who ate New Orleans, Ray Canada. Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tooker. Milo's Music Parlor with Kim Vu. And the all-new show about death called Death, the Podcast with Dr. Arian Alphan. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and it's batonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and a bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. And all of it we're called It's New Orleans. You can also find photos from this show and find out what we all look like on itsneworleans.com and also on our Facebook page. Those photos were taken today by Alison Moon. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher or some other podcast app, thank you very much for subscribing to us. Stop right now, whatever you're doing, except driving. Take a moment to rate and review us. That does actually help other people find us. Our show is recorded live today at Wayfair on Ferret Street where they put fine dining into a sandwich, fine booze into a glass and have a fine brunch here. Only on Saturdays and Sundays, though. Happy Hour is a production of I Know Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. For Andrew Duhon, Graham DuPont, everybody around here around the table at Wayfair and back at our office at I Know Broadcasting. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Grant Morris. We'll see you back here next week on Happy Hour.
Farmers Insurance knows the difference between a car hitting your bumper and a clown car hitting your bumper. Oh, 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 sorry about that. Because we covered it. Click for more. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Underwritten by Farmers Truck Fire Insurance Exchanges and Affiliates. Products not available in every state.